KOR to Sports here with the great Stitch Duran uh, here for the uh, Hopkins versus Smith uh, uh, weigh-in, man. Uh, tell us what you saw out there when uh, when these guys faced off. It got kind of intense in there. Yeah, it got a little bit intense, but, you know, I'm working with Joe Smith, and I, I met him last night, wrapped his hands, and uh, he liked him. But uh, he's a cool guy, man. You know, he's not going to. You know, he's not going to be intimidated by a legendary guy like Bernard Hopkins. We all know what he does, and you know, at this stage, it's all a psychological game, and uh, he didn't fall into it. You know, and, and it was funny because I was telling him last night, I said, "If you really want to get into Bernard's head, you tell him you're going to get beat by a white guy named Joe Smith." You know, I don't get no worse than that, brother. You know, and, and he didn't do it, so it would have been nice. <laughs> but did you get to talk to him after uh, the the weigh-in? Did, did he say what Bernard was telling him? Nah, you know what? At, at this stage, you know, it's between them, and it's all psychological, and that's not my job. My job don't start till I get in the dressing room. Definitely, that, that that surprises me. So you said you you barely met him yesterday. So is that how it normally works? That that you. You get the call. I, I know, obviously, you're known for being a cut man, but you also wrap hands and, and stuff like that. No, it, it happened. You know, Tommy Gallagher's the original cut man, but uh, he had some some problems and he couldn't make it over here. Uh, so they called me a couple weeks ago, and uh, I spoke to uh, uh, Phil, the, his manager, and just seemed like a super, super guy. And, you know, I've been like in a six-week run. This would have been my uh, a weekend off, but they gave me a call and I had it, so this makes it a seven-week run. But, no, it, it happened that way, and... Uh, that was I met him yesterday when they came in when I came in, uh, but that was important for me to take him up to my room and wrap his hands and and find out you know how he likes him wrapped and all that and uh, man he wanted me to sign him so I guess I did something right. Life of the cup man man Sit seven weeks in a row T tell us I'm sure you traveled different countries but well, how's the last seven weeks been? Oh no it's been tremendous you know and especially last week because last week I, I did a little bit more than just work as a cut. I, I went to uh, uh, Langley Air Force Base and, and Fort Eustis with a couple of UFC fighters and you know I co-host MMA Junkie Radio with George and Goals and we went to go visit the troops and support them you know and I've done a trip to Afghanistan and I've been to Europe but I always want to give back to the soldiers because of what they do for us. Uh, so this was kind of like a uh, man they worked our asses off though brother you know we had a schedule that was so busy but just to go out there and support the troops was uh, that was uh, that was a love fun weekend no, i appreciate that man obviously you know the uh the the charity work you do and, and stuff like that it's 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 uh, very much appreciated for those guys for sure um speaking of ufc definitely got to get your take man conor mcgregor two-weight world champion it's never happened before simultaneously what, what did you think about his performance oh no he's a beast man no doubt about it i remember uh the first time i saw conor fight we were in stockholm sweden and and he beat the guy and you know, I went in the dressing room and I said, man, you know, the Irish are like the Mexicans. You guys are the Mexicans of the other side of the water, you know, because they could fight. But, uh, you know, he's done a lot of good for the game, you know, and he's made, uh, you know, he's, he's outsmoking, no doubt about it. Uh, but he could fight. He could back it up. What were your thoughts when you heard he got a, a boxing license in California? I laughed. You know, I, because, you know, the thing about it it, it, it don't take nothing to get a license, in all fairness, you know, and, and the thing about 50 it. 50 bucks, right? Yeah, yeah, 50 bucks, you know, and that's the thing about it. So uh, on, the, on the, the guys that know the game, you know, uh, it, I laughed uh, because, you know, if you're going to fight, you're going to get your license at that point. You know, you go through your physicals and you go through your evaluation, then you go and apply for your license. But uh, it's kind of an amateurish move. I mean, it, it creates the... Uh the buzz kind of still going and stuff like that. What what happens if he gets in the ring with Floyd Mayweather? Uh, it's two different ball games, brother. You know the thing about it when you're dealing with uh, you know ten rounds, twelve rounds, opposed to three or five rounds, and and it's hands only. Uh, it's it's entirely different. You know the ball game is entirely different. And uh, Floyd is just a special special fighter, just very gifted fighter. Uh, Conor McGregor, you know, uh, he gets hit, he could hit. You know, but uh, it's like, you know, you being a softball player trying to play in the major leagues uh, baseball. It's two different games, brother. Tell us, man, you've been in the game for a long, long time. Who's been kind of the, the one fighter you've worked with that you're just like, man, that, that was special. I, I really enjoyed that, that relationship. You know, I, I've had a lot of great opportunities. You know, the Klitschko brothers, you know, really fall on top of the list. Uh, there's a documentary coming out tonight on Johnny Tapia. Uh, I had the privilege of working with Johnny, Johnny and uh, he was just a natural warrior. And, and to be with him and uh, to work with him. But, you know, I, I've been blessed even working with so many great fighters in boxing and kickboxing and the, in the mixed martial arts. That it's really tough to pick one, but if I had to really kind of pick one out of the hat, it had to be the Klitschko brothers because they're just a first-class act all the way.
tell us, I'm sure you have crazy, crazy stories, a bunch of different stuff. Tell us what one, one of kind of the craziest just stories you've, you've had just kind of being in, in the fight game. Well, it's, it's tons of, you got to read my book. As a matter of fact, the book just came out, From the Fields to the Garden. Uh, it's on Amazon.com and Kindle. But uh, I was talking to uh, 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 Usyk's uh, manager, uh, Sasha, today, and I was talking about Vitaly. And when Vladimir fought... Uh, 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 Alexander Povetkin in Moscow, as we're saying goodbye in the dressing rooms, and Vitaly is a, a stud. I mean, he's a typical Soviet Union guy. He looks at me and says, Tish, I'm not gay, but I love you. You know, and to me, that, that meant so much because I just know the way Vitaly is. I could hear it from Vladimir, he's a little bit more westernized, but to hear it from Vitaly just really meant so much to me. That's pretty neat. Um, tell us, man, you as a fan, obviously you're a fan, Give me a, a boxer and an MMA fighter that you stitched around is like, I have to watch this guy fight. If, he, if he's fighting, I don't know where I'm at, but I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be watching somehow. Well, you're talking about present fighters right now? I, I, I don't know, you know, I see so many fights all the time and, and I don't really base it on the characters anymore. I, I'm, I'm not really big with the hype because a lot of times the hype is bigger than the fight. Uh, but, you know, I do so many fights, man, that to me, guys that don't have big names, will go out there and throw down, and that's really what I want to see. So it's tough really to say, you know, in the old days, obviously Roberto Duran, I was a big fan of his, Alexis Aguayo, you know, uh, in the MMA world. Uh, yeah, you know, to see uh, uh, Conor McGregor, it's always good. You know, the Diaz brothers are good. I loved working with uh, 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 Anderson Silva, Vanderlei Silva, you know, so it's really tough for me to say this one guy or one guy, you know, uh, but I love them all. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much for your time, sis. I really, really appreciate it. And, uh, and Let me just reiterate on the book, brother. you got to go to Amazon.com uh, or Kindle, but it's called From the Fields to the Garden, too. Because, you know, I wrote the first one, From the Fields to the Garden, and uh, it was such a success that all the fans wanted me to do another one and do another one. And once the UFC let me go, I figured, well, it's time. It's time, brother. You know, so check it out, man. It's a good book. Tell, that, tell the fans where to follow you, social media, Instagram, all that stuff. Yeah, well, at Stitch Duran, and then I guess hashtag Stitch Duran, so I'm pretty flexible. I have a new line of tape coming out, uh, Stitch Premium Tape, uh, that's water-resistant, that will be available in January uh, at stitchduran.com. So uh, hook me up, man. It's touch bases. Definitely link up with them. Amazon for the book, stitchduran.com for, uh, for all the equipment. It's got great stuff, so thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for the interview, Stephen. It means a lot to me.